Uh, I think Taylor Swift has just reached a new low. She released her album, The Tortured Poets Department, on Friday, and uh, I wasn't going to let you forget about that. Now, I'm not saying, before anyone says this, she is obviously still a billionaire. She's too big to fail. Uh, she's doing just fine. Um, but as a person, I think she has reached a new low because she is just showing with this album what an immature person she is. I think I called it uh, 31 repetitive songs that are only relatable to 17 year old girls and 34 year old women who are still mentally 17 years old. Okay. And a lot of people were kind of hoodwinked because they thought that this album was going to be shitting on her previous boyfriend, Joe Alwyn. But really, it was like two songs about him and the rest of this 31 song album was about a two month situation ship with a guy who looks like a sewer rat. <laughs> so I think everyone who isn't part of the Swifty cult or everyone who isn't getting paid to promote this, anyone who isn't getting paid to give it good reviews is shitting on this album right now. They're trashing it because they have to be honest. I saw some negative reviews. Um, so one said, Taylor Swift, uh, the Tortured Poets Department is a rare misstep, surprisingly flat and at times cringeworthy. Tortured Poets Department is stuck in the past. Uh, underwhelming, the Tortured Poets Department, underwhelming and clunky, hollow lyricism. Uh, then Taylor Swift's new album is proof she needs to take a break. Oh, like pretty, pretty balanced takes. Is there anything wrong with taking a break? For someone as psychotically workaholic as her, probably, yeah, but, yes. but we're not talking about taking a break from work. We're talking about taking a break from songwriting. Mm -hmm. Like, wait for new inspiration to hit you. Well, what she does is she just gets in a new relationship and there's your material. So yeah. <laughs> here's a, an excerpt from one of those negative reviews. Swift seems to be in tireless pursuit of superstardom, yet the negative public opinion it can come with irks her, and it's a tired theme plaguing her discography and leaving little room for lyrical observations she excels at. So you want to be a billionaire, you want to be the most famous pop star on the planet, but you can't handle people sending you mean tweets. Is that what I'm hearing? I mean, she, the thing is, she's insulated enough where if she wanted to, she wouldn't have to read any of them. All of this no. could go through management. No, but she's like definitely a name searcher. <laughs> she's like, she's such a narcissist that she can't help but look for negative feedback. You think so? You think she just goes and yes. she searches Taylor's? Uh, that would be boring if you're her though. It's just going to come up with a bunch of like material that your publicist put out. I mean, think about what happened with the recorded phone call with Kanye and then people spamming her Instagram comments with snake emojis. Yeah. So people were spamming your Instagram comments with snake emojis and that's your formative trauma in life. Like, get over yourself. This, the entire thing was just spinning this stupid victimhood narrative, even though she is a billionaire supervillain who is flying around in a private jet plotting world domination. I, I don't feel love, bad for you. I would love a whole album based on, like, my jet ran out of fuel. Uh, uh, I wasn't able to get yeah. my table at Le Cirque. I, yeah. like, I want some some real shit like, like that. Not not wow, poor me. I'm so famous and it's so hard to be me. She's like my black card expired and I had to order a new one. <laughs> uh, they said that this album came from a need to write. It's just that maybe we didn't need to hear it. And I wish that I hadn't. Honestly, I, I will say I did not listen to the whole album because it all sounds so similar. And I wanted to show a video okay. to prove this where someone is just scrolling through all these songs showing that it all sounds like the same song. Uh, they're all about two seconds long, so pray to the content gods that we don't the get copyright copyrighted. Gods. The copyright gods that we don't get copyrighted for any of these. Oh, is that the one with the, with the lyrics? 
with the which which song is the one with the racist with the, with the lyrics? Oh about yeah, the the, the lyrics about or is racism. I, is I hate it here. The one about Kim Kardashian. I hate That's it literally here. all I know about. This. The one about Kim Kardashian is called "Thank You, Amy," but the okay. only capitalized letters are Kim. I mean, this all does sound very much the same to me. Yes. yes. <laughs> the the lyric you were mentioning is. We would pick a decade we wished we could live in instead of this. I'd say the 1830s, but without all the racists. Does she know that if she was to live in that time period, she would be that? When, okay, I was actually having this discussion with someone earlier. When we were talking about Molly Ringwald and like how her movies were too white, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, and you said nothing. Thus proving that you were a product of your time, just like everybody else before you was a product of their time. Mm -hmm. And that's annoying to me. Right. Like it's one thing to look back at the world that you lived in and be like, it should have been different when I was that age, because at least then you can hold yourself accountable. Everyone thinks that if they lived in a different time period, they would have been the revolutionary. Like, and it's no, not you weren't true. even you weren't even that in the earlier version of yourself. Right. You know, like you weren't even that in the earlier version of your own work. Right. So am I yeah. supposed to buy that you were suddenly going to hold 21st century like ivory tower ethics? based on what like a couple of years of indoctrination suddenly was gonna somehow just enter your it's like they don't actually know where any of this information came from right no they, they just they, they, think, they woke up one day and it was yeah, just there but they think what they're told to think yeah. essentially um i think on my on my screed i also called taylor swift the kim jong-un of the music industry because she is instilling fear in anyone who says anything negative about her or this album including this journalist who wrote a negative review for paste magazine they said in an editor's note there is no byline on this review due to how in 2019 when paste reviewed lover the writer was sent threats of violence from readers who disagreed with the article we care more about the safety of our staff than a name attached to an article they're keeping they're journalists anonymous in order to criticize this album because they're worried about Swifties sending them death threats and sending them like weird powder in the mail. That is bonkers. They're insane. <laughs> like that is bonkers. They're I think that the Swifties are just fully in the depths of delusion. And one person said, it's unbelievable how people can still listen to this woman and not get tired of the same sound over and over again for about eight albums now. But I think they are getting tired of it because I saw the streaming drops for the second day after this album's release were pretty bad. It's showing a loss of 10 or more a million streams per song on all of these because that just shows they're all Swifties are all using like bot farms to like artificially boost these streaming numbers. She's getting payola from Instagram because when you scroll on the reels tab, it has a pop up link to her album. Mm -hmm. She's getting uh, payola from iHeartRadio who played her album on repeat on all 800 of their stations all day. There was definitely so when I was uh, when I was home over the weekend, went to the Mall of America, definitely saw merch and the music playing in many stores. Everyone is starting to feel like this, mm -hmm. that Taylor Swift machine is totally <clears throat> fake and artificial. Uh, like, I'm not saying it's entirely that, like there's definitely an, an organic appeal to her, mm. but people, the public is growing tired of her. Okay. I think that's like, what I'm trying to say is she's, she's hit the ceiling, mm. hopefully. Her her career might have hit the ceiling for its success. Do you would you say that's um, unrealistic? The only, the only other opinions I have about this album come from like uh, like someone that listened to it who liked it, uh, and I saw the sentiment that I saw online was people liking it. But again, I'm not Taylor Swift. I saw mostly negative, but maybe that's just my yeah, algorithm. Like I'm like, uh, and mine was just uh, twi Twitter for you page was mostly people talking about it in a in a positive sense. But mm -hmm. I don't know how much of that is organic, nor do I think that it's really indicative of anything for me because I'm not the demographic You're not the of people demographic. that's going to to watch or listen to any of this. Um, I think that enough of the population is uh, consumer that it doesn't go anywhere and she stays on top as long as she wants to, honestly. I think that overwork and uh, is a bigger threat to her than her music becoming 
un unlistenable. Sure. Right. Like I, I think there's enough of an indication that people who like her are going to like her no matter what she makes and she can continue to put out those albums. It is interesting to see how it ties into her personal life, given that her personal life is so sought after by people now, you know, people wanting to know what's going on with, you know, who she's dating and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, if I was Travis Kelsey, I would have ran as fast as possible. Like, <laughs> I feel like, at least, at least if I was, if I was, if, if I was, if Travis Kelsey was younger, yeah. I would have, because it would be a distraction to his work. But well, he's, he's about to retire. He's in the anyway. twilight of his career anyways. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, I think I, that a nobody's lot. Nobody's saying that she tanked. Like these, the album sales seemed fine to no, me. No, of course like she's the, not. Yeah, she's not tanking and certainly not in any financial trouble. That's, as we said, she's literally too big to fail mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. But I think that's only what is driving public sentiment out of her favor. I, I did see an interesting thread. You didn't see it. I wish I had saved it uh, of somebody talking about the anti-Christian lyrics in the song. And they said it was a, a thread of like seven or eight more songs that they felt had anti-Christian lyrics to it, which is interesting given that her fan base, she, she benefits heavily from, you know, Christians who can compartmentalize, who understand that, you know, she may not hold their views anymore, or at least maybe she pays lip service to them. Um, but are, you know, you know, it's the whole thing about how conservative women unapologetically like Taylor Swift and don't have a problem with separating art from artists, even though politically she's very different from them. I mean, I didn't notice that there were any supposedly anti-Christian lyrics, but yeah. I guess I'll look into that at some point. Um, but I think a huge sentiment of the album was her being mad at her own fans because yeah, ex explain that. Yeah, she, she resents the fact that her fans are intensely interested in her personal life and her dating life. And they sent her a lot of negativity when she started dating Maddie Healy last year because he <laughs> uh, is allegedly racist. Mm -hmm. um, he, he said racially insensitive remarks about Ice Spice, if you recall. Uh, and he allegedly watches pornography, which is highly debasing to black women. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that part is true, but that was the general the sentiment. And people were calling him a neo-Nazi. So overall, I think the pressure got to a point where she just felt it wasn't a good PR move to be seen with this guy anymore. And she had to like bring Ice Spice on stage with her to make everyone realize that she was the good guy all along. She was trying to de-radicalize him, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Uh, I saw an inside source say, this was Maddie Healy's reaction to the album. Maddie still thinks very highly of Taylor, but we were all nervous about what she might've said on the album. Uh, Maddie Healy, quote, couldn't be happier with how the record turned out. I have reason to doubt that because a few days after the album was announced by Taylor Swift at the Grammys, he was on stage super drunk, um, making veiled threats at someone who you know who you are. Um, I want to play that video for you guys. Out here. Hold on, here we go. <clears throat> do not come for me. <laughs> Trust me, I, you know who I'm talking to. Honestly, no, you are. I am as mental as I speak. Now for the seats. Don't fuck with me. Trust me. Loses its weight when you won't actually name the person. But you know who you are. Yeah. That Well, that came from, I don't know if you remember this, but they both did like a little shout out to each other on stage where they mouthed mm. the words, you know who you are, I love you. Mm. That, that That was like a few months before that. Yeah. So I think that was targeted at her. But See, I think a lot of people are feeling like Joe Alwyn deserves an apology right now because they're realizing that Taylor Swift is psycho. Yeah. And that he never actually did anything wrong. She just mobilizes her fan base to go hate on th these people that she dates. And so this clearly the, shows that she's, she's not acting her age. This was the two tweets that she liked, right? That she wanted yes, to- Yes, uh, Taylor Swift liked these two Instagram posts. You guys can now see she's the problem here. Uh, and here is a photo of Abby Lee Miller from Dance Moms putting the names of her ex-boyfriends into a pyramid to rank them with Joe Alwyn at the bottom and Travis Kelsey at the top. And then a Hunger Games meme where they uh, 
they they shot the cannon for Joe Alwyn's metaphorical death. Yeah. In response to this album, she liked this post and then unliked it. And she Pepper's Farm remembers. This woman is 34 years old and she's acting like a teenage girl. Mm. Of course, only teenage girls are going to find that charming. Yeah. Right? I I I think that maybe millennial women shouldn't <laughs> uh, make being a Swifty part of their identity at this point yeah. because it's just incredibly immature uh, to identify with this woman. Do you think that there's a point where uh, her fame and money comes runs headlong into her fan base and the fact that the fan base that she's cultivated uh, is going to be part of the um, social ju- is part of the social justice crowd? Therefore, they will ever find the hypocrisy a little bit more to, than they can take. Taylor Swift's hypocrisy. Uh, I mean, just dating just, a guy who's politically incorrect. No, you mean? not not just that, but just the the money, her wealth. Oh yeah, I mean, I've seen plenty of them talking about like, is it possible for Taylor Swift to be an ethical billionaire? Yeah. Because they so often say it's impossible to be an ethical billionaire. Because you're saying that you feel that she's upset with her fan base now. Yeah, yeah. that's a, a sentiment that a lot of people saw. In Maybe the album. for her last album, she just writes a whole album about how much she hates her fans, and that's how she goes out. I think that would be iconic. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media, and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.